Hello everyone. We are team M and B, not M and M and M's. <laughs> M and B. My name is Victor Cairo, and the members of our group is uh, Nathaniel Muñiz, Ian Gallagher, George Marin, and Talal Shahim. Today, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Jennifer Kirch for coming and for providing us this opportunity to help Regina Matter on the analysis of the mission and mission statement. To begin uh, today, let's see. All right, perfect. All right. The overview of today is going to be the following. I'm going to talk about the introduction of the problem. Why are we representing the, this analysis? Then, Talal will discuss the primary methods. Later, George will talk about the primary research analysis. Then, Ian Gallagher will discuss the conclusion for the primary research. Then, Nathaniel will talk about the secondary research method analysis and conclusion. And last, I will talk about the recommendation of the team and the conclusion. Let's move on to the introduction of the report. So there's a situation, a problem. Regina Matter wants to know how effective is the mission and vision statement. In order to know, understand, and know how to expand its presence and growth in the school. The significance of the mission and vision statement is important. It's as follows. The mission, both statements, represent the organization's values. Every organization, before making a, a business decision, an investment, they have to know whether or not it's this decision matches accordingly to the values of a school. So mission and vision statement are important for the guidance of the school in order to grow and increase its presence in NOSTA. We will use electronic surveys and for our, uh, that is for our primary analysis and for the secondary we will discuss about other mission statements and uh, information that uh, the team found in the website in and other resources. Now I will move, I will pass it on to Talal who will discuss the primary research methods. Thank you Victor. Good afternoon, my name is Talal and I'll discuss the primary data research for the primary data research procedures, uh, our team decided to use a but, uh, yeah, approach the survey by development by trying to get a broad amount of information. We wanted to go to the current mission and vision statements without changing them. And this would allow, with, with our questions and the survey, this would allow our team to be able to analyze what people thought of the existing mission and vision statement and give a baseline. Next, we look to understand what the public looked for in a hybrid Catholic institution. This information could be compared with the data con con containing the existing mission and vision statements and yield important information about what needs to change, if anything. Then, we included questions that would give information about the visibility of Regina Matter's existing mission and vision statements. This data would show whether people knew what the existing statements were, were and where to find them. Finally, we included questions about the importance and significance of the mission and vision statements to prospective, student, uh, to prospective parents and parents-to-be. And the final survey was streamlined by the team to, to remove redundancies and make the survey clear. Uh, the age range we chose for the survey was the age range between 25 to 45, and those were parents or parents-to-be. And the sample size of the team 
uh, that we chose was 102, and that would give us a 90% confidence rate. This number was chosen uh, by the team, and uh, the team gained access to to the chosen participants by sending out social media links and sending surveys by emails to the participants. The purpose of the survey was to try to achieve what uh, was to achieve was to achieve the true values of this Catholic hybrid institution. And now, thank you. I'll hand it over to George Murray. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, as Saul said, I am George, and I will be discussing the primary research data analysis. Um, so what that includes is the number of dis um, disputed, um, disputed surveys, received surveys, and invalid surveys. So let's um, talk about who received the surveys first. Um, for us, we thought for the best results, we would pick people that um, are between the age range of 25 and 45, and are current or potential parents. Um, after we set this criteria, we decided um, to ask members uh, and staff of the St. James Apostle Church in San Antonio, Texas, and um, Knight of Dozen and Pi to fill out the survey. We picked these two groups because we felt that they kind of represented the criteria we set and the target market well. Right. And um, so just to let you know, we passed out 200 surveys. We got back 102. And we had to consider two invalid. The way we consider surveys invalid, invalid is if they were left completely blank or if they had seven or less responses. So that means they only completed 70% of the survey. Fortunately, only two of the surveys were left invalid. We did, at first, we did have a um, question that eliminated surveys, but after we got results back, we discovered that even if they didn't answer this question the way we wanted them to, they still provided appropriate information towards the end goal. So after after we got this um, surveys back, we had to compile the we had to compile the data. Um, for the surveys, we used SurveyMonkey, so we had to send out two links because of the restrictions on numbers. They only allow you 100 surveys per survey. Um, so after we got the data back from those two links, one of the teammate, teammates tallied up the data and compiled it into an X, X, Excel sheet, and they recorded it. And after they recorded it, we constructed. Um, graphs of the overall data, and the, uh, these are the following graphs. Um, I'm not going to go really into detail about the numbers because in a minute I'll pass it along to Ian and he will discuss our findings and conclusions about these numbers. So the first question we asked was just to see if people actually look at the mission and vision statement. And we asked them, and when looking into an organization, do you look at their mission and vision statement? And I'm not going to go into numbers because Ian will explain in a minute. And then. Um, the following graphs are going to be bar graphs because they were multiple response questions. So you can't really get a percentage out of those. It's just going to be the highest amount of responses. Um, the second question we had was, do you feel, after reviewing the mission statement, do you feel representation it matters? And we did attach the mission statement before the survey even began. Um, and as you can see, red represents the highest response, purple represents the second highest, and orange represents the third, and all the others are blue. So, uh, Ian will explain this in a minute too. Um, this was the one we had that was going to eliminate some of the surveys. Are you interested in enrolling your child or future child in Catholic school? We determined that even though they don't, they might not want to enter their child into Catholic school, they still have valid opinions about the mission and vision statements and could provide valuable data. Alright, and then we just threw questions in like, um, do you feel like um, the mission statement represents these values? and red represents the highest, purple, second, orange, as I said before. And then we asked the same question. Uh, then we asked them if they could change anything about the vision statement, what would it be? And same colors mean same meanings. And you can see, um, you will explain in a minute what we found about these. And then we asked the same question about the mission, mission statement. And then, then we started asking people what they want to, what they look for, and what principles they look for when I'm reading a mission or vision statement. And the same colors and the same thing, and you will explain it in a minute. And then we asked the same question about the vision statement. And then we just wanted to get an overall um, look and see how mission and vision statements do influence people. So we asked them to rank the importance of mission and vision statements. 
from one to five, one being the lowest and five being the highest. And the results were kind of scattered because the medium was 2.5, so yeah. And then we finally asked, would this mission vision statement, the current one, entice you to enroll your student into Major Junior Matters? And just to fully understand all the data we collected, um, I'm gonna pass it on to Ian, because he's gonna explain what we found and how we found it. Thank you, George. Uh, just said, uh, I'm Ian Gallagher, and I am uh, going to talk to you about our primary research conclusions. So basically what we did is each one of our questions kind of broke down into a separate category of what we were looking for when they answered these questions. So for our first group, we have the perceived relevance of mission statements. And this is just kind of looking at how people look into, when they're looking at a company or a school or an organization, how often these people look at a mission or vision statement at all. So, uh, for example, we had 58% of people do not look at the mission or vision statements at all when choosing a school or an organization or someone to do business with. And this may be due to the visibility of mission and vision statements. You generally have to go a couple layers into a website or do a specific search looking for mission and vision statements. So that may add to complications of people not seeing them or just not bothering to look for them. Uh, and then we also want to know how, uh, when they do look at these mission and vision statements, how does it influence them, if it influences them at all. So the answers were weighted towards little or no influence. As you saw on the graph, two uh, was the most popular, but it averaged out to about right in the middle at two and a half. So the next group was the clarity of the mission and vision statements that already existed for Regina Matter. And so uh, when we gave uh, the people taking our survey the mission statement, they said that the primary value that they saw in the mission statement was religion. And then uh, when looking at the vision statement, that they said that education and leadership were the two primary values that they saw. Uh, and those were the, clo they were the two closest uh, at the top. And then uh, when we asked them to uh, say if they had any uh, kind of problems or qualms with the um, existing mission and vision statements, they said that the structure uh, was kind of the problem, but not the wording, uh, it, but it was just kind of the, the way it was formatted and uh, it was the way it was formatted and just kind of the way it was laid out. And then so our final uh, group of conclusions were when we asked people if they would send their child or their future child to a Catholic institution, 58% 58 58 said they were not. And this could also include people that are just not interested in private schools in general, not necessarily Catholic schools, or people that aren't interested in uh, Montessori, but it was grouped in with Catholic schools. Uh, and then when uh, surveyed, most people said when looking at vision statements, the most important thing to them was an end goal. So they really wanted to see a big picture plan or just kind of the final goals and uh, resolutions for the school's uh, plans. And then when we sent out a survey to families of Regina Mater, and we had one question in that survey, and that survey asked them, uh, do you think that the mission statement uh, as it is right now re accurately represents the values of Regina Mater? And that was a unanimous yes. There was no yes. So now I'm gonna pass it off to Nathaniel Munez, and he's gonna talk about the secondary research uh, and their conclusions. Hi, you know, I'm Nathaniel Muniz, and I'm going to be talking about the secondary research, and that kind of just consists of the method of collecting all the data, what I analyzed, and the conclusion of all the stuff I found. Now, to start off, the, all the research of the secondary data was based off the concerns of Gina Matter, and that was how effective they thought their mission and vision statement was. And so I went on to look for um, some research articles and some studies where mission and vision statements were the subject of the, of the research and based on schools. I also looked into multiple top um, mission and vision statements of some companies and a mission statement of a top prep school in the nation. Now, the data I analyzed. I start off with Horace Mann, which is a prep school here in the, here in the United States, and this, it's, it's one of the top prep schools and they had a whole page laid out 
for their value statements and their mission statements, and it's like kind of showing everything that they were about, <coughs> that they were going for. And their stuff was really well formatted, focused on education, kind of just building the knowledge of their students. And then my second point was how to, this, this was a study done by the, a university council for educational ad administration and this was based off of kind of putting a focus on how effective a school was just based on their mission and vision statement and not necessarily the grades they got or the set success of their students. This next one was a study done by the University of Johannesburg and this was um, focusing on how implementing a mission and vision statement into an ineffective school, school that wasn't didn't have a great success rate, kind of changed, altered the structure of the school, and actually um, ended up showing that students were actually doing better and the faculty actually had a, a structure to educate their students. And this final point was important to have a mission and vision statement, and this was basically a small article done by John, John Gabriel and Paul, sorry, Paul Johannes, and this was basically showing how to create a mission and vision statement with the poor school and how that's kind of, it actually helps structure the school. And so if the school's doing bad, it kind of helps you go further with that. Now, I kind of, all, all the data I found, I put into a, a few points of conclusion. And so all the secondary research, this is what I concluded ideas. So despite all the attention a mission and vision statement gets from people outside of the school, it's still important to have one just because it creates a structure for the faculty, for the people in the school to uh, continue to do what they do. And, and actually creating a mission and vision statement, I found within the research that focusing on some key points and creating one such as unifying the institution, so creating a community effect within the people in there kind of helps people like, feel wanted to feel like they're actually doing a part of the success of the school. Implementing and following the statements you create. So when you have a mission and vision statement, it's actually good to do what you're saying, the purpose of what your school is doing, so actually not going off on some other random trades, and continue to develop uh, with changing ideas. So that's with about every five years a study was done that so a lot of high schools throughout the nation were actually changing their mission statements every five years because they felt that ideas within society and their school were changing, so they wanted to focus on that. And to always focus on your stakeholders, this is families and students, so it's always good to mention your students and your and family and the faculty within your statement. And once a mission vision statement is created, it's always best to actually allow people within the organization, the institution, to see it so they can actually put their two cents in and say whether they feel that this is what they're doing and they're actually contributing to this. Now I will now pass it off to Victor Geidel who will talk about the recommendations and the Thank you, Nathaniel. Uh, I will, my name again is Victor Cairo. I will talk about the conclusions and the recommendations. First of all, about I'm going to explain the mission statement. The mission statement reflects the values successful of the organization. According to the surveys to the participants, there is uh, room for improvement in the structure and uh, wording. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the mission reflects the true guidance of the school. Now, the mission statement. Uh, according to the participants of our survey, the, the mission statement can include an end goal for the institution. Uh, that is, that was the factor that most people were, were looking for at the vision statement of Regina Matter. Another suggestion from the team is to publish the vision statement on the, on the website so people have more access and understand the, uh, the end goal, the end vision of the school. In addition, our team came up with a vision statement 
for working in a manner. And this is how it is. To become a vital institution that encourages students to live a balanced life between Catholic and family values while applying their versatile education responsibly in society. That is our suggested vision statement. And I'm going to conclude the presentation. I talked about that there was a problem that Regina Matter needed to know whether the mission and vision statement were effectively working toward the growth of the school. Talal discussed the methods. And uh, we had a 90% confidence interval because we only received 100 participants. George talked that the mission statement was uh, effective on representing the values of uh, religion and family. Ian uh, said that that the mission statement had clarity on also on the, these values as well. And uh, what else? Nathaniel talked about the secondary research method, and uh, he made research on that the uh, mission and vision statements are important for the school and that he recommends that uh, it's, it's valuable that the directors of the institution uh, asks the employees whether or not the missions and vision statement are applied at their job. For instance, the faculty. And I talked about the recommendations. I gave a vision statement. We gave a vision statement recommendation and uh, the mission works perfect just some wording and we suggest also that the visions could be included for at the website. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you Jennifer for being here. If you have any questions, 